Hey everybody, Passants here. This is a guide for beginners that will explain a variety of game mechanics and hopefully help you understand how to better play as a team and help your allies on the battlefield. I strongly advise you to watch this video through to conclusion, as it contains a lot of useful information, things that many players do not understand, even at higher levels. I've got a lot of game mechanics to explain in no particular order, so let's get going. First up is the mechanics of player health and damage. All classes of soldier have a base 100 health points, which is an important number to know since it helps you understand some of the damage diagrams on weapons. For example, a weapon has to deal at least 50 damage in order to kill in two hits. Taking hits to different areas will change how much damage you take. The chest deals normal damage, the arms take only 50% damage, and the legs take 80% of normal damage. If you get shot through both the arms and chest, you'll take chest damage. Headshots have a 358% damage bonus, and they ignore damage resistance from the heavyset badge, meaning they usually kill in one hit. Speaking of which, the heavyset badge reduces damage from 9 to 15% depending on the level, and stacks multiplicatively with other multipliers. For example, if you have heavyset bronze, and get shot in the arm by a Coravan TK that deals 25 damage, you'll take 25 times 0.91 times 0.5, which is a bit over 11 damage. Health automatically regenerates after not taking damage for 11 seconds, but if you've lost more than 70% of your health, you'll only naturally heal up to 30%, and if you lose more than 40%, but less than 70%, you'll naturally heal to 60% health. In order to recover to full health after being seriously wounded, you have to either find a medic crate or a first aid kit. Medic crates can be found by pressing M and scrolling in, but I highly recommend carrying a first aid kit whenever possible. You can see teammates who have multiple first aid kits with a green cross underneath their username. Try whistling and pressing F to get their attention. They may come heal you. Don't forget to do the same if you see an injured teammate nearby. You'll be rewarded with heaps of XP. Because first aid kits are so useful and often in high demand, high capacity medic pouches are great things to bring whenever you have spear infantry space. You can heal yourself while moving, but you must stay within a certain distance of a teammate to heal them. So, if you don't use the Hand of God combat badge, then it is almost impossible to heal a teammate who is moving around. Therefore, if you're injured and a medic comes to heal you, try to hold as still as possible. Don't move side to side or even look around with your mouse, as there's nothing more aggravating than your patient wriggling around and ruining the healing process. So, that's the short on how to be a bro as a medic or patient in Heroes and Generals. Oh, and on a related note, repairing damage-friendly vehicles is another great way to help your team. Vehicles can take three main types of damage. Armor damage, structure damage, and component damage. Armor of a vehicle protects it from damage, with different vehicles having different amounts of armor in different places. Motorbikes can be damaged with pistols, armored cars are resistant to small arms, but anti-tank rifles and rocket launchers will make short work of them, and heavy tanks can repel all but the most powerful armor-piercing cannons. However, with every nick and scratch, the armor quality wears down and becomes easier to penetrate. Armor health can never be repaired and functionally limits the lifetime of a vehicle, because even if it's repaired, it will still have less armor than before and then be easier to kill. Structure health is the main health pool of the vehicle, and when it runs out, the vehicle explodes, killing all occupants. Any shot that penetrates the armor will damage a vehicle's base structure. Additionally, all vehicles have components. Things like fuel tanks, wheels, tracks, wings, engines, transmissions, ammo storage, gun barrels, yada yada. Most components will hinder the vehicle when destroyed. For example, destroying the tracks on tanks makes it very difficult for them to turn around, Destroying engines on any vehicle slows it down. Additionally, the components have damage multipliers, so when the component takes damage, the structure also takes damage. For wheels and tracks, the structure damage multiplier is usually zero, but for components like fuel tanks and ammo storage, the damage multiplier is very high, so you'll die very fast if you get shot at into the fuel tanks or ammo. This information is important for driving, for shooting at enemy vehicles, but most importantly for appearing friendly vehicles. Base structure and component damage can be repaired using a wrench, which you can get for 32,000 credits from the driver or tank driver ribbons. 
Stand next to a damage-friendly vehicle and hold left-click to repair it with your wrench. As its health increases, any destroyed components will become usable again, restoring functionality to the damaged vehicle. This is particularly important for friendly tanks that are under direct fire, as besides simply giving the tank a massive boost to durability by repairing as it takes damage, you'll also help keep vital systems like the gun breech, gun barrel, and turret ring functional, so your friendly tank can still aim and fire his gun without impediment. If you're carrying a wrench and you see a nearby tank under fire, make it your absolute priority to get close to your friendly tank and help it. Try crouching down behind it to hide from enemy gunfire while you do it, but be careful of being accidentally run over if your tank tries to reverse. You can also get hurt or killed if you're standing too close to the tracks on the sides while the tank turns or moves. As a driver, you'll see a green marker when you're being repaired, which indicates where your mechanic is relative to you. Be careful not to run over your mechanics! If he's standing behind you, and you absolutely have to reverse, try moving very slowly at first, so he knows you're moving, since as long as you're moving very slowly, you won't deal much damage to him if at all. It's very difficult to repair a moving vehicle, so try to make sure you have enough health to survive whatever maneuver you're trying to make without repairs. Also remember that if a component is completely destroyed, it won't gain functionality back until its health has been restored to full. You can see whether some external components such as the tracks or gun barrel are functional from the outside, and the driver can see the health and status of all components in the bottom left. get heaps of experience for repairing friendly vehicles, it helps you win the match, and your teammates will love you for it. While we're on the topic of vehicles, let's talk about how stealing them works. Civilian vehicles, such as bikes, trucks, and tractors, are always unlocked, and can be used by anyone who gets on them. However, military vehicles start locked, and can only be driven by the player who spawned them. The teammates can enter the vehicle, but only in passenger or gunner seats, they can't get in the driver's seat. If the vehicle's left empty, or the driver gets shot out, enemy players who get close to the vehicle can hold E to unlock it, after which it becomes similar to a civilian vehicle. The first person to get into it assumes the driver's seat, and if there are passenger or gunner seats, then their teammates can get into them. If all players leave the vehicle or die, then the vehicle is still unlocked, and anyone can get into it and drive it, from either team. Once the vehicle is unlocked, it immediately loses any supply crates, but it retains its weapons. If the original owner of a locked vehicle is killed, the vehicle remains locked, but can be unlocked by any player on either team, or else it will disappear without a trace, 30 seconds after the last player interacted with it. The only exception to the normal despawning rule is armoured personnel carriers and supply trucks. These special vehicles are extremely important on all game modes, since friendly recon, infantry and paras can spawn on board them. Placing them close to the objective is a surefire way to gain the advantage, and if they can be snuck behind enemy lines, they can allow huge numbers of players to appear behind the enemy, to wreak havoc and capture objectives by surprise. They remain locked and in place indefinitely, whether the original owner dies, spawns another vehicle, anything else. However, if they take structural component damage, they get marked by an enemy, they have an enemy right next to them, they lose the ability to spawn troops for 15 seconds. And, if they're unlocked or destroyed, they lose the ability permanently, even if you recapture it later. Therefore, try to prevent enemies from seeing, shooting, or marking you or your teammates' APC, as that will prevent your allies from spawning on it, and be very careful to stop enemy infantry from getting close to it, as they can easily destroy or unlock it. If you see a friendly APC in a dangerous position, keep an eye on it and be sure to kill any enemies who approach. Oh, I mentioned marking, so let's quickly discuss how that works. You mark a target by looking right at it. Keeping an enemy player or vehicle directly in your sights for two seconds or more will create a bright red marker on their position that is visible to your whole team. As discussed, this will disable enemy APCs for 15 seconds, and it will make it easy for powerful teammates like fighter pilots to target that enemy with their heavy guns and bombs. There are three types of marker, a triangle for players on foot, a diamond for enemy vehicles including planes, jeeps, and tanks, and a diamond with a bar underneath for APCs. This is a great way to help your team take on threats that you don't have the equipment to deal with yourself, especially enemy tanks. Marking one will make it easy for your own tanks, 
air support, or even just infantry with rocket launchers to destroy the enemy. Finally, I want to talk about a personal peeve of mine. Landmines. How they work, and how to not accidentally screw over yourself or your team. Landmines come in two flavours, anti-personnel and anti-tank. The anti-tank mines are cheap, extremely powerful, and are set off when a vehicle drives over or when shot. They have small blast radius, but deal enough damage to destroy any non-tank vehicle in a single blast, and they'll cripple the tracks and transmission of tanks that drive over them, slowing them down and making them an easy kill. Enemy players are likely to look out for them in obvious places such as on bridges or roads, and they'll dismount their vehicle to shoot them if they spot them. Therefore, I highly recommend to place them in river fords, as they're much harder to spot and very difficult to remove safely when they're underwater. Anti-personnel mines deal far less damage and are more expensive, but unlike anti-tank mines, they do go off when infantry walk on them. They're inconsistent to use, and they're so obscenely expensive that even if every mine you place kills someone, which they won't, they will cost you more credits than you gain <laughs> by killing them. Therefore, they are only recommended for extreme late game players who have literally nothing else to blow thousands of credits on each game. As a new player, however, it's still worth knowing about them. First off, look out for small dark shapes in staircases and in doorways, and be ready to shoot them from a safe distance. Consider calling out to your team that the enemy has placed anti-personnel mines if you see them. Since they're so expensive, and they're unpopular, they're rare to see in most matches, and your team often won't be looking out for them. So it's good to call them out. It is extremely important to understand how teammates interact with mines. This is without fail my biggest gripe when playing with new players, and it's something I really want to see change in the community. When you place a mine, a red skull marker will appear above it that is visible to you and your team, but not the enemy. They can also be seen on the map. This skull means a friendly mine. If you come across a friendly mine, do not shoot it. Avoid it, and let the rest of your team avoid it too. Let it sit there alone until an enemy, who will not see the warning marker, obliviously kills themselves on it. The only time you should consider removing friendly mines is if you are 100% sure it is a direct impediment to your own team's progress and you need to attack in order to win. If you are a defender on assault, there is no point destroying your own fortifications just to attack the enemy who is supposed to be attacking you. Instead, wait behind the fortifications and defend, and let the enemy come to you. Waiting is good. If you wait long enough without getting run over, you will win. And the best way to prevent incoming enemies from running you over is by placing landmines. <laughs> all landmines have a short arming period before they can go off, and all landmines have a limit of 10 total mines at a time per player facing them. So don't place more than 10 until one of them has gone off, or else the oldest one will disappear. And... All landmines can be set off by teammates. I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you drive a vehicle over a friendly anti-tank mine, it will go off and it will damage or destroy your vehicle. Sounds obvious, really, but I clearly need to spell it out for some people. So do not drive over landmines and don't walk over anti-personnel mines either. It drains XP and credits from whoever placed the landmines, it weakens your team's defense by removing that asset, and not to mention, you just got your stupid ass killed. This is one of the surest ways to piss off your team and lose the game at the same time. And on that cheerful note, that's all I have for today. <laughs> I hope you all found something new here, and I wish you all the most enjoyable of games and the most helpful of teammates. Now, get out there and make your teammates day with your new knowledge. Uh...